most of your microbiome is neither good nor bad. So then it becomes, it depends. And so what does it depend on? It depends on what you eat. It depends on what environment you expose your microbes to. It depends on what you do. And then your microbes that can be either good or bad for you can turn and be good for you to, and work to your advantage if you give them something good. I did a microbiome test to help determine if my food choices were really optimal for me. It provided dozens of scores on digestive efficiency and food recommendations. As far as microbiome goes that we could test from your sample, it looks like your inflammatory activity is on the good side, so that's really reassuring. Your gut lining doesn't look like it's in distress or experiencing some threat from what we can measure, but there may be specific smaller kind of molecular pathways that we score that may be somewhat of a hint. So like LPS biosynthesis is something that you have more active in terms of our gene expression that goes into pathway activity assessment. You have it more active than our average customer base, our reference population. So one score being off, it's not something to get alarmed about, but uh, having said that, lipopolysaccharide is something that is known as an immune trigger. So we can't fully assess the state of your gut lining, but if it is somewhat permeable and this LPS molecule from your microbiome actually crosses through the gut lining to your blood, to your circulatory system, then it can, you know, instigate some things. So it puts your uh, immune system on alert or can even alarm it a little bit or you know just a low-grade inflammation may happen as a result of it and if you have this vionella dispar for instance one of the microorganisms that can produce lps lipopolysaccharide it's not like you have to hyper focus on that because some people they look at it they start to google it they look at one culprit organism and they want to do something about it they run with it to the doctor i'm saying it's not that much about that focus on that one guy. It's more about trying to see how we can balance out all of the active microbes and the functions that they're engaged in. The balance can be improved by me improving my microbial diversity through the right foods and probiotics and fermented foods and those are the action steps I, I would take. Oh absolutely, so let's talk about your uh, microbial diversity for a second. Your richness and diversity is a little bit on the lower side especially the quantity of the active microbes that we see. I was looking at your recommendations to see your superfoods because a lot of them are focused on rebalancing your microbiome and enriching, enhancing your diversity, boosting the richness of the active microbes. And so there are things like broccoli, which I know you already eat, and uh, there's bok choy. And so a lot of these are very much filled with good nutrients and the types of um, carbohydrates that are known as resistant starches and you know those those things are really good for feeding your microbes and stimulating them to produce some beneficial nutrients for your gut and uh, support your health and wellness overall.